Hi, welcome to the Tips and Tricks video series. I'm Andy Acker, Director of Education for North America. And I'm Brian Bouchard, Regional Manager for the Northeast. So what we're going to do here today, the tip and trick for today, is how do we treat an inside corner here with curdy band when the other corners don't fit. You know, we have these type of things for a 90 degree. We could put at the bottom and then do the corner. But what if we don't have that? And maybe you don't even have this particular type of corner here that we make now. Right. These were specially made for these type of neo angle, plus our bench, the SB41 shower bench. So you can see this thing works perfectly when you've got a neo angle. But we want to show you today what you can do with regular curdy band if you don't have if these corners. If you don't corners. have these corners, yes. And of course, for years and years, Schluter allowed you to just do a lap like this for our 90 degree before we had these inside corners. So that's okay, but we'll see how to do it when we get here to this 135 or 22 and a half on, a, on this 45 degree here on this curb. So, as usual, we're putting the thin set down here and we're going to use our curdy trowel, which is a proper notch or an equivalent trowel to about that notch. You can see the thin set's a little loose. We typically use that with our membranes. We use the thin set loose to put the whole curdy system together. And of course, when we put Dietra on the substrates too. So uh, the sequence of events really isn't important here, Brian. Is it as far as which piece goes on first? And No, so not, not really. You can do it anyway, as long as you achieve a two inch overlap. Okay. I start with the flat side of the trowel and now I switch to the notch. Okay. Now we've pre-creased this curdy band lengthwise, so it's, it's folded right down the middle, and this is our five inch band, so we have roughly two and a half inches going out onto the tray and up onto our curb. We place that in, make certain the crease goes right into the corner, and always, as always, we press it in. You firmly embed the curdy into the bond coat. We want to get out any air bubbles or blisters or dry spots in there. And of course, the thin set at this consistency makes that very easy to achieve that, that I just coverage. added more thin set here, Andy, for well, that on, overlap. On the overlap. That's important that we get the thin set all the way in there. Yep. Yeah, I noticed as you turned that corner, it's got that little bit of a dimple. So it's a good idea as you draw your blade across there, and embedding the curdy into the thin set, that you make certain you pull that corner in to make sure that's a tight corner. But we have some more pieces of curdy to put over the top of that, so that's not as crucial as you may think. This is going to be my next piece, Andy. That's taking care of this seam that we have when we join the two shower right. curbs together. So this was cut on the job site. And these are just raw edges in here at these, at these miters. So we need to treat those because this is the shower in here, the wet area, and of course the top of the curb, and then the outside going onto the floor here, which would uh, probably be uh, the Dietra with the tile over the top of it, we would certainly hope. So again, a little more thin set put on there. Just a short piece of curdy band again. Now we're lapped over the other piece that we used here on the uh, uh, floor to wall connection or a pan to curb connection. You would use the same technique here if we were outside a shower and you were going to put down Dietra and waterproof the entire floor. If it was a, a kitchen or a bathroom or a laundry room or utility room where you could add to the utility value of a floor by actually waterproofing it and protecting the substrate underneath from ever getting wet. So we've got that piece on. Show us that piece, what you've got there, Bryant. So this is going to be the piece going in the back. And I've just sliced down about two inches. Okay. And I'll install that on the back side of this curb. Okay, so we folded that lengthwise just like we did these pieces. And then we cut right to the corner so we get a bit of an overlap so it'll lay flat on there. Right. And you notice when we did this, you're now going to have the buildup 
out here. So we have these two pieces and then we're going to do one more piece over the top to treat the top of the seam. So the buildup is higher on the outside than the inside, but that shouldn't be a problem because we want this tile on top to kick in towards the shower just a little bit. So this tile shouldn't be flat on the top of the curb. It should have a bit of a slope, so if any water hits it, it wants to run back into the shower instead of out. So we have buildup out here. We're going to do that anyway when we set the tile. Oh, there's your piece. Okay. There you go. So one set's in the thin set, Just smooth that out, and then we'll have to put some thin set between those two once you work that all the way in. All right. That looks pretty good. Push that down a bit, get that corner tight. There we go. And now the last piece. Now this is kind of unique how that's been cut, Bryant. Yeah, basically we set it on here dry and just took our marker or pencil and made a mark on the underside so that we could get the same mitered angle that we have in the curb. And that's how we cut the curdy band. And we put a slice on the forward edge so we can overlap come right down the face of go. the inside of the curb. Now we could have left after ma extra material for the outside too, right? And cut it and folded it that way, but why need the buildup? We really don't need it out there. So right. uh, we didn't even leave this straight here as far as the cut on this. Uh, like Brian said, we actually followed the top edges of the curb so we didn't have those extra little tabs that need to be bent over. So again, a little more thin set over the top here. proper notch trial again. Make certain that we get it all covered. Don't leave any holidays here. What's a holiday? Holiday, a little spot where there's no thin set. Ah. It's all about coverage again, Andy. Cover. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right. Now many may think, wait a minute, we've got a little pinhole down there and we have there, but I can tell you again, years and years of experience of just doing this with our inside corners, we've really never had a problem with that. When we get the overlap and we get the thin set in there, thin set gets secure in this environment and becomes very hard, very dense, and uh, it just does not leak as far as uh, uh, waterproof. So there you go. There you have it, Andy. All right, that looks good. I think that'll serve its purpose. Well, thanks for joining us on this tips and tricks video. If you ever encounter an inside corner that's uh, not suitable for any of our others because the angle's not right or you don't have these on the job site, I think this is a great way to get this accomplished. Yeah, and don't forget to visit our website, schluter.com, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. <laughs>